Hey, everybody, it's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be a good one between the New York Giants and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'll be back with you again with scores around the league at halftime. But kickoff right around the corner. And standing by to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. We are just a few miles from the Gulf Coast of Florida at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa. Just a short time ago, the Buccaneers emerging from their tunnel to the roar of this frenzied crowd here in the Sunshine State. And we're in the big ship, and fittingly, everyone here ready to do battle as Tampa Bay gets ready to match up with Eli Manning and the New York Giants. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at this Buccaneer ball club. They come in feeling good after back-to-back -back victories. And if you look back to last week, it was all about their defense. Anytime you hold an NFL team to single digits, that's saying something. On the other side of the field for the visiting Giants, they were losers there. Here's Ronald Jones, first carry for the USC man. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Michael Thomas on the stop. So a look here at the key inactives, and we got this list before the game down on the field. <laughs> they tell us the same thing every time, don't they? Next man up. No excuses. Be ready to play. That's the mantra of every organization. The key is having guys on the roster who are capable of filling in and playing at a high level. That's when you know you've drafted well, scouted free agents well, and stocked your team just the way you're supposed to. Call it a gain of five that time, and they'll be left with a third and about four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. So how about that for a chain mover? They're all the way down inside the 40 now for first and 10. And he'll have a gain of three to the 33. The excellent play last time is followed by a much more routine gain of three. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Looking to throw. And he finds Howard complete. And he gets the first down here as he's taken down at the 24. At first glance, I thought he just used his size in order to win the route. But he also had a little subtle move in there as well. Made the defender think he was going one direction and was able to track the ball in another. They'll get him to the ground at the 20 following a pickup of four. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Back-to-back four-yard runs. Now, look, if they just do that all the way down, field ball ends up in the end zone, but that's a little difficult to do. Yeah, I think now third and two, that defense ready to stiffen up and stop that run. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. 
A reminder, coming up later tonight, a lot of buzz about this game. The Browns, they've been doing some travel. Back-to-back -back primetime games for them. Monday night, they were in New York. Now the Browns head to Los Angeles to take on the NFC champs. Browns and Rams, an 8-20 kickoff Eastern time, 5-20 in California. Even though he's a fourth-rounder, I think he might have a chance to play and prove that, hey, I could have been taken higher in that draft. And we've seen so many times now, guys who go lower in the draft, undirected free agents that become big time players, Pro Bowl players. So you never know. Fourth round pick has a chance to be a really good player. They added a lot of talent to a roster that really needed an infusion of youth. They got a very good infusion of youth. And they didn't really reach to get anyone as well. They stuck to their draft philosophy, got the best players they could at the time they were drafting, and inserted them into their lineup. Now this one over the middle into the hands of his tight end complete. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Second and four. Got a man. It's Brashad Perriman. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. It's a pickup of 17 and a first down. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. The slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Out of the shotgun, it's Jones. And he'll get it down on the plate of the 37. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, it just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. He'll pick up another first down with that run. Here's a throw that's taken in out of the backfield. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. But a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Now a first carry for their fullback. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. A give to the fullback on the dive. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. And I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag. But you caused the play. You did it. I had to. So now then, the penalty's got him set up with a first and goal. After the penalty, it's Jones. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. They give him five that time as they draw a bit closer here for a second and goal. And Brad, they went to a nickel defense, and that's a surprise this close to the goal line because ordinarily you use the back end of the end zone, the sidelines as extra defenders, and you got bigger people on the field to try and help against the run. His path became similar to almost running a stretch play, didn't it? Trying to find a crease, anywhere to put his foot. And he's got it! Caught in the end zone, touchdown Tampa Bay! Rashad Perriman, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Bucs are able to strike for six. going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 45 seconds to go in the first half. So quickly all the way up at the 40-yard line. Back to throw here. He's going to air one out. 
And this will be caught at the 30. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. So the big play has them all the way down to the 30 now for first and 10. They'll look to throw. Oh, he's able to outmuscle him here as he pulls it in. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? Because <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. On second down now. It's Jones, and not even back to the line of scrimmage this time as they're on him quickly once more. And we will... On play action, they'll throw. There's the Penn State man, it's Chris Godwin. And he's brought down, but not before they get it across the 20-yard line. The drive starting play, a good one. Give him 19. This quarterback now 12 of 16 thus far. It's first and 10. From the shotgun, a give to Jones. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Here's a ball thrown right side and complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. Last play, they got stuffed at the line. Different story here, over 20 yards. Catch number 100 for his career right there, and it's good enough to keep the chains moving. Now a first down carry by Jones. And he's going to get this past the 50 and into giant territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits, and the creases like they were able to exploit right there. 16 yards, a first down. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. On second down, it's Jones. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 15 yards on the play, first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice, because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked up by the Michigan man, Jabril Peppers. And a terrific return as he'll take it up past the 35. Here comes the Tampa Bay offense now heading back out onto the field. And there are parts of their last drive they'd like to emulate. Of course, they'd like to forget the inning, the interception. But they did put together, Charles, a nice sustained drive to get them down the field. Yeah, and unfortunately for them, the only thing that matters is part two, right? Because once they threw the interception and finished off the drive, it does them no good to go back and say, well, you know, we had a good one going. Finish things off. That's the only way you can get it done. We saw a number of good games earlier today. This one might top all of those. It's been a dandy as we come up on first and 10. They're going to look to throw on the crossing route complete. It's Howard. That nice pickup of 17 yards. They'll look to throw here. He's got his tight end over the middle, O.J. Howard. And finally, down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. Over 30 yards there. And first downs on three consecutive plays now. They'll look to throw. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. O.J. Howard, his first touchdown of the new season. And the Bucs have taken. Let's go, let's go. 94. 
They'll start the drive with a carry by Jones. And he'll push forward for about four up to the 23. Brandon, you know how many times we've done games, and at the start of the fourth quarter, we see both teams hold up the four fingers, fourth quarter is ours. Well, how about this drive? You saw the four fingers for four-minute offense, and this offensive line has really hunkered down and established themselves. Now, this is where they say, put the game on our shoulders, we'll lead the way, right? No doubt about it. And let me tell you, if you're a running back, all you want to do is get behind those big fellas, have a little vision, and find some space. And a solid way to do that on the first play of the drive there. That'll put him up over 160 yards receiving now for the game. They can't seem to stop it. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Face mask. Defense. Trailing in the fourth this close of a game, that's a penalty you just can't afford. It's an absolute killer, and it's one that drives coaches and teammates insane. So the yellow flag came out, and that leads to a new set of downs for this offense. First and ten. Out of the pistol, the give to Jones. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. Now, the objective there, I mean, yes, the positive gain, that's nice, but work some clock. Yeah, you're exactly right. But the problem for them is still within a possession. So they can't just sit on it running the ball. So out come the Bucks now. And three timeouts remaining here defensively, but really not much reason to use them at this point as this one is all but over. He's got a man complete. The Giants going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. As the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. The give is to Jones. Now the Giants will use the second of their three timeouts as they'll stop the clock with 24 seconds to go in the game. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. Now it looks like he'll throw here. Flush to his right. And he can't get a throw away. He's taken down. The Giants going to burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. The Bucks on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. The play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's got Evans. A big game there, and that should certainly be enough to put this one in the win column. Down, Jones. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. And now we'll get a timeout here. They're able to stop it with one second to go in this game. Oh, now look at this. They're lining up to add three more. A little insult to injury here late in the game. This to make it a two-score game. And the kick is good. So you wonder how this one might be remembered the next time these two teams meet. But until then, this game's over. Well, a little drama there at the end, but really this thing was already decided. The late points get scored, and then it ends on the kickoff. And I'm right there with you, partner. At the end of the game, they knew what they had to do. Just make sure you don't cough up the football at the end. Just take care of it, and victory was theirs, and that's exactly what they did. So for the Bucs, it's an ideal start as they move to 3-0 now on the young season. And they will hit the road next week to take on the Los Angeles Rams. Meanwhile, for the Giants, 
They'll fall to one and two, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. The Bucks are winners here as we say so long from Tampa.